To configure our first endpoint, I'm going to plug into the next radio with an Ethernet cable and bring up the web interface for that radio. The default IP address on this radio is still in use of dot .100. After we log in, the first thing we're going to change is the device name, and we're going to call this endpoint1. We'll save that change. And that's taken place. Next, we're going to flip to radio settings. The radio mode is going to be endpoint, and that's the default. The RF data rate, which is a core setting and it has to match on all radios, we'll keep that at one meg. The TX power, transmit power, we're going to decrease that for benchtop testing. We're going to select minimum. If we were to install these radios in the field after this testing, we would need to remember to increase the TX power back to 30 dBm. The network ID is a core setting that has to match on all radios. We'll select 544, which is the network ID we're using for all radios. The node ID is actually going to be the same octet or the same last number of the IP address. And we're actually gonna change the IP address on this radio to 101. So the node ID is also going to be 101. The radio hopping mode, another core setting that needs to match, we'll leave that on. And we'll save those changes. Now that those changes have been saved, we're going to navigate to the network page. And here is where we're going to change the IP address. We're going to make this unique for the network. So 101 is what we decided on. We're going to apply that change. And once we do that, we will no longer be able to access this radio on the dot .100 address. So to get it to come back up, I'm actually gonna change the IP address in the navigation bar to dot .101. And once we change that, the radio has reloaded and it's now on its new IP address. The last radio we're going to configure is our second endpoint. The first change we're going to make in this radio is the device name. We'll call this endpoint two and save that. In the radio settings, it's an endpoint. RF data rate is one meg. The TX power, we're going to decrease that to minimum. Network ID is noted before is 544. The node ID, because this is going to be IP address.102, is going to be 102 for the node ID. Hopping is on. We'll save those changes. The last change we'll need to make is in the network page. And here we're going to change the IP address to 102. And save that change. And let that run for five to 10 seconds to ensure it's actually taken place. Then we're going to change the IP address in our navigation bar to 102. And once we do that, we should see the radio come up under the new IP address. And that completes the configuration of endpoint two. Now that we've configured all three radios, we should have connectivity to all radios in the network. To illustrate this, we're simply gonna to try to log into the web interface of each radio. We left our ethernet cable plugged into endpoint two, but we still should be able to access 101 and 100 over the air. If I reload the page for 101, we see that it comes up. If we do the same for 100, which is our gateway, you'll see that the page reloads successfully. This indicates we have basic connectivity between the radios and the network. Be sure to watch the next video on how to better judge connectivity between ZoomLink radios.